the wharf yet. But uh, this is the port that gives you access to Dunedin. So it looks like it might be a good day today. The sun is just coming over the horizon by the looks of things. And the uh, forecast temperature at the moment is about 13 degrees, I think. And this is from the rear of the ship. Just sort of show you this because it looks like the cloud is actually sitting right on top of the water shrouding the hills. Just bizarre that. If I just zoom in over here a bit, you might actually see the land through the clouds. Never seen anything like that. Worth getting on camera I think. And that must be where we came in. It's like once again it's a port that's surrounded by small mountains and uh, seems to have a road that goes around the whole bay. This looks like we're going to be reversing in here and swinging around pull alongside this wharf. In the distance, see a rather large church village, the Port Chalmers is just in the background, it's only very small, but this is where the bus shuttles will pick us up and take us into Dunedin, which is about a 25 minute drive. There's that cloud formation again. Really bizarre, never seen anything like it. So what's this, the municipal building or something? I think it is. And this is one of the churches. Goodness me, it's gorgeous, isn't it? So, we're in Dunedin now. Cheryl's taken a few photos and we're in a place called the Octagon, which is the centre of town and it is actually the shape of an octagon. It's a very pretty place again. Mixture of old and new. We 
Ia, Ia, as you can see on the map. We'll just put it here. So we're going to be heading back to the ship. And just wanted to show you some of the buildings in the area. It is gorgeous. Really gorgeous. And just so that we know that they get a bit homesick, I think this sign says Edinburgh is over 10,000 kilometres away. There you go. Lovely.
<laughs> Phil taking a picture of me. Okay, let me turn this on. Then we've got the old Milton Haven, the old orange black diesel, operated by Glow Go Go Orange. The route that takes uh, mainly the back back of the way. It's a pretty basic sort of cruise. A little cruise. The north is Point, and the western slopes of Major Peak, rising directly here. <laughs> Waterfall, Cheryl. It got absolutely drenched to the skin, so they called it Wet Jacket Arm. It goes for some 15 to 20 miles up there, up into uh, east from here. And we, of course, are inside Packerin Passage. Oh it's the mainland of Fjordland to one side and Resolution Island.
Sometimes these get snow on them. There's nothing visible today. The day is still perfect. A lot of people taking pictures today. And why not? see anything like this anywhere except maybe in Scandinavia. So this is Milford Sound, which is the most famous one. We're about to see a number of commercial vessels as we go into the field. We have a certain plus up coming out on a later afternoon cruise, including the two with masks that do overnight cruises on Milford Sound. These vessels are bottled on the scows that ride the coast in the early days of New Zealand. Before many roads and rail were established, a lot of traffic went up and down the coasts, particularly on the western side. The scows came purely from livestock to wool to all sorts of produce, and also of course people there and now coasting the scows. These two vessels are Model 
something similar to this, you know, so a bit of mass, right. sound, sound. I'm just to look at it, make it a bit of 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 Okay, I've come to the top deck here to just give you an idea of how tall these mountains are. They are big suckers. This is where it makes the ship look tiny. We're just entering Milford Sound now. And just sort of show you the terrain. Look at that. Another tiny waterfall there, just coming down the cliff face. But these are just massive.
agora que eles caminharam, e ela vai ver se caminharam. Tem que baixo de Thank you. 